Hello Photopillers, Rafael Dabar here. Okay, I'm getting this question a lot and I want to answer it once and for all, forever, because it's super, super important. Here we go. Rafa, when I'm trying to photograph the moon aligned with an interesting subject and I focus on my subject, I get the moon out of focus. Why is that? What I am doing wrong? Well, first, let me say that there is nothing wrong in getting the moon out of focus. Sometimes it's not possible to get the moon in focus and your subject in focus. And you have to choose between the moon or the subject. I always prefer to focus on my subject and get my subject in focus and the moon a little bit out of focus. But if you want to get both in focus, the moon and your subject, do this. As always, the first step is to plan a cool photo. So go to photo pills, tap on planner, and plan your moonshot. If you wish to learn how to plan these kind of photos with the moon and an interesting subject, watch this video. In my case, I've planned a cool photo of the full moon aligned with the Favadish lighthouse, with the top of the lighthouse. The red pin is placed on my shooting spot and the black pin is placed on the lighthouse, my subject. Like in this photo here, taken by Antoni Cladera, the photographer of photo pills, during the blue hour, actually at the end of the blue hour. Check panel number two, the top panel. The shooting distance is 1.3 kilometers and the moon height is 28 meters above the ground level of the black pin. This is above the ground level of the lighthouse and actually the lighthouse has a height of 28 meters. Also the top panel is telling me that the size of the moon, the apparent diameter of the moon is 11.1 meters. Actually, if I zoom on the map, you can see the size of the moon right on the map, so you can compare it with your subject. How cool is that? This shot happens on December the 8th, 2022 at 5.25 p.m. and it happens during golden hour. How do I know that's golden hour, the natural light I'll have? Easy, swipe the top panel to the left, get the panel number three, and check the elevation of the sun. You know that the elevation of the sun uh, tells us the natural light you'll have at the time of the shooting. And if you don't know that, Please check this video to master the natural light. But here, the elevation of the sun is minus 1.43 degrees, which means it's golden hour. The sun has already set and we get these beautiful golden tones in the sky. Remember that the golden hour happens when the elevation of the sun is between 6 and minus 4 degrees. And the blue hour happens when the elevation of the sun is between minus 4 and minus 6 degrees. Okay, 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 now I have my plan. Let's see how to get the moon and my subject in focus. Tap the map settings button, the button that's next to the plus map button here at the bottom. And now tap on depth of field here in the map tool section. Tap on DOF, depth of field, and go back to the map. What you've done now is to enable switch on the depth of field calculator, which will allow us to visualize on the map both the field of view, what will be in the frame and outside the frame, and the depth of field, so we know what's going to be in focus and out of focus. Great, the first thing you need to do is to set your camera. In my case, I'm going to set the Nikon Z6, which is Antoni's camera, and set the focal length. For example, uh, 500 mil because it's a long distance shot. And the aperture, let's set the aperture to, for example, f5.6. And the focus dis distance, where I want to focus. In this case, I want to focus at the black pin. I want to focus on my subject, the lighthouse. Remember that I placed a black pin on the lighthouse. Great, so I am focusing at 1.3 kilometers, which is the distance from the red pin and the black pin where my subject is. I'm gonna shoot in portrait mode you know, to get this beautiful portrait photo of the lighthouse and the moon on top of it and my shooting direction will be the direction of my black pin so I'll align my field of view, my framing with the black pin. Great, as you see here I have my framing. You clearly see what will be in the photo and outside the photo. You can also uh, change the uh, shooting direction by dragging this black dot here and adjust your framing. But in my case, I'm gonna center it with the black pin like this. Now, on the map, you can read my focus distance, 1.28 kilometers to be precise, and the depth of field near limit, and the depth of field far 
limit here we have it this means that if i'm focusing at 1.28 kilometers on my lighthouse i'm gonna get in focus with these camera settings i'm using from 685.72 meters to 9.67 kilometers so since the moon is behind the far depth of field limit uh, it's almost at infinity for us the moon will be out of focus. Infinity is out of focus. Why is that and how can I fix it? Well, the hyperfocal gives us the answer. In this example, the hyperfocal distance is, here we have it, 1.48 kilometers, which falls behind my focus distance, 1.28 kilometers. And you know that when you focus at something that falls in before the hyperfocal distance, so the hyperfocal distance falls behind my focusing plane, infinity will be out of focus. And thus, in this case, the moon will be out of focus. In other words, if you want to get in focus both your subject and the moon, you need to focus at something that falls behind the hyperfocal distance. So here you can do two things. First, you can keep your camera settings and find something that falls behind the hyperfocal distance and focus at it. And then make sure that your subject falls behind the depth of field near limit so it appears excessively sharp in the photo. Or you can focus at your subject because you want it to be like super crispy and sharp in the photo and change your camera settings to reduce the hyperfocal distance so your subject falls behind it. For example, one thing you can do is to close the aperture. If I change the aperture, for example, to f8, let's see what happens. As you see, the hyperfocal distance now is 1.04 kilometers, which is a shorter distance than my focus distance, 1.28k. So in this case, with these camera settings, if I'm focusing on my subject, I'm gonna get both in focus, my subject, the lighthouse, and the moon. Also notice the depth of field far limit falls at infinity, so infinity will be in focus. If you don't want to change the aperture, let me set it back to f5.6, you can also use a shorter focal length. For example, if I set a focal length to 400 mm, let's see what happens. Again, the hyperfocal distance falls before it's shorter than my focus distance. In this case, the hyperfocal is 944.78 meters, and my focus distance is 1.28 kilometers. Cool, cool, cool. To sum up, all you have to do is to change your aperture or focal length to get a shorter hyperfocal distance. Change them until you get an hyperfocal distance that's shorter than your focus distance, your subject distance. Ah, and you wish to master the hyperfocal distance because it's a super, super important concept in photography. We use it all the time. Watch this video. And this is how you can get in focus both your subject and the moon or the sun if you're photographing the sun. And the cool thing is that you can do all these calculations or your planning from home. And as always, if you have a question, if you need help, leave a comment below. And if you wish to learn how to photograph the moon with the foreground, you can watch this video. Or you can also check our super detailed moon photography guide. And actually, I'm going to leave a link in the description to our moon photography guide. Check it out. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and click on the bell to get notified when we release the next video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot. Legendary photos. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.